Welcome to you Wise Guys, HVAC Concepts. My name is Jose. I'm Miguel. And I'm Chris. And today's concept is charging procedures. Today's topic, charging procedures. First of all, when you start any charging procedure, you have to make sure that there's absolutely nothing in the system. You want to make sure you clear the whole system of any atmosphere, any uh, moisture in it, any non-condensables. So in order to do that, we hook up um, a vacuum pump. And the ideal vacuum to pull would be about 500 microns, but we don't have a micron gauge in this scenario. So there's actually another method we're going to be doing here is you take your thumb, and this here is what's called an exhaust port on the vacuum pump. Every the moisture that comes out um, that it's vacuuming from the system actually comes out of this in a, a vapor form. So what we're going to do just to make sure that there's nothing in the system is we put our thumb very lightly just so you can like just try to feel like the slightest pressure because once it's not pushing anything out then we know that there's nothing left in the system to be pulled out so it looks like we're about set there everything's good and if you want to look at the gauges here we actually have it down it goes down to negative uh, 30 inches of mercury all right so i'd say that's about good let's we're going to start all right, so now, uh, now that we got this uh, ready, we're gonna go ahead and close these now that the, the vacuum's been pulled, so that way it seals the vacuum in. All right, now, all right, now that those are closed, I'm gonna go ahead and shut that off. And now she's ready to be charged. Now because we pulled the refrigerant from the system, we're gonna use this recovery tank to charge the system initially. But if we don't have enough refrigerant, we're gonna come over to this Virgin refrigerant tank. Now the difference between the two tanks is this one has a dip tube, so the liquid refrigerant is at the bottom. And because this is 410, you want to charge liquid. So if you were using a virgin tank, you would have to flip it over because it doesn't have that dip tube. So you have to have this valve at the bottom. Alright, first off, always put on your safety glasses before you start anything. Uh, we're going to go ahead and Open us, open up this uh, charging cylinder and start flooding the condenser through the high side and the low side while it's off. We're gonna do that until we reach about 125 psi. And it'll just take a little while to get there. All right, so we got it to looks like about 105 PSI right now, and we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next step, which is gonna uh, be starting up the unit and continuing on from there. No. All right, always wanna make sure that we have our safety glasses on. Safety is the most important thing. So it looks like right here we got our uh, system. It's about a little over 100 PSI right now. We're trying to charge it in here. Um, we were trying to get about an idea of about 125, 150 initial charge, or initial charge, but um, it started leveling out because of the temperatures. Um, once the temperatures of both of the, these, the pressure is about equalized, then it's not going to push it in anymore because of the um, ambient. Because of the pressures, yeah. All right. So what we're going to do now is we have it connected to the liquid side still, but we're going to be throttling it in through the low side of the compressor. I know you're not normally supposed to throttle any liquid through the, um, through the suction side of the compressor because uh, compressors normally can't handle any liquid flood back. But in this case we're going to be throttling it so slightly that um, we're allowing it to flash into a vapor before it actually goes into the compressor. Alright, so I'm going to start off by, um, you want to go ahead? I mean, Jose, plug it in here. Camera, cameraman talk here. All right, I had to do some uh, ingenious uh, troubleshooting right there. We got that solved. It's a pretty good unit. All right, so it's on now. So now what we're going to be doing, make sure this is open. We're going to slowly open. There's a low set. There's a low ambient control on that that actually made it just shut off. So we're going to be throttling Correction, it. Correction, uh, low pressure control. 
low pressure control. So now what we're doing is we just open it just so it rises and then we close it. So that way uh, it allows the liquid refrigerant you just put in there to level out or to vaporize. And sometimes it may take a while because what's happening is um, I believe the system when we recovered it had a low charge so when we recovered it all back into this pump it wasn't enough and so now that we've got the initial charge in there we actually might need to switch over to the virgin charging cylinder over there um, to finish out this charge here. All right and we're back here we got our uh, charging cylinder hooked up because the recovery cylinder I think was just about empty there. So what we have if you uh, notice we actually have it upside down reason for this being is because um, the recovery cylinder has that dip tube that I think Jose was talking about. Um, this here charging cylinder does not have a dip tube and since we need the liquid to go in for uh, charging in liquid because liquid is a faster form of charging, well, all the liquid in this usually sits at the bottom of a tank so when we have it upside down like this it makes all the liquid right there um, near the valve that's going to be actually charging. So now we're going to go ahead and like I said throttle it through the low side and you just want to see it rise like that and it'll let it fall back down. You want to let it equalize. All right, it looks like uh, we're just about up to the correct head pressure there. So now I believe we're going to hand it off here to Jose and he's going to uh, instruct you on what's going on next. All right, now that we've dialed in the head pressure on the system, we're going to finish off making sure that we have the right charge using subcooling because this is a TXB system, so we can't go off the screen. All right, now let's finish up. All right, now to check the subcooling of the system, we're going to use the high side gauge and we're going to get our temperature of the liquid line right here. We're going to get the pressure on the gauge and we're going to convert it to temperature using our ET charts. We get the physical temperature of this line and then the difference will be our subcooling. Alright, so it looks like we initially uh, got a little bit too much of a charge, so what we're going to do here is make sure we have our safety glasses on first and then we're going to passively um, recover some of the refrigerant just with the pressures inside the system. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and put it in here. And then we're going to open up the high side here because this is after the compressor so that way it's allowing the uh, refrigerant to be pushed into the recovery tank. So Chris, what's uh, the subcooling we're trying to achieve? We're trying to get about uh, 10 to 15 degrees of subcooling in this system here. All right. Looks like we're getting closer. Yes, it does. We're gonna go ahead and let it sit for a couple minutes now that I removed some of the refrigerant, and we're gonna kind of let the let it settle down there, um, so that we can get into a steady state, let everything kind of level off. Now that we've reached the acceptable subcooling, we're about done here. How do you think we did, Chris? Well, I think that we did awesome here. We go ahead, we went ahead and got this charge in there nice and safely, and it looks like the system is running correctly. What are your safety glasses? So now that we've done the charging procedure, we're going to review some of the steps that we went through and the amount of time you know, each of the procedures uh, took. So to get started, we're going to talk about the initial connections of the gauges and the charging tanks and why we had to switch up our charging tanks. The reason we had to switch to a charging cylinder from a recovery tank was because the recovery cylinder was actually um, empty. We had what was in the recovery cylinder was what we had uh, previously recovered from the unit before the video began. and um, it, it wasn't enough to fully recharge the system. Exactly, yeah. yeah. It, it wasn't enough to fully recharge the system. So we switched to, uh, to make sure that, you know, we used the, the same refrigerator, we switched to a virgin tank, it was a charging cylinder. And fully charged? Yes, yeah, fully charged, that way it had more pressure inside the, the tank. 
um, to actually work against the pressures of the system so that way we could add it to the system. So we chose to introduce a refrigerant to the system using which side? The low side. The low side. The low side. We, we throttled in liquid to the low side and it, it took us about 10 minutes. Yeah, it took us about 10 minutes. 10 minutes to throw it in. Uh, we didn't show you the whole time it was it was happening, but we did show you the the way you do it, and you just continue that process for about 10 minutes. In this case, you know, until we reached the the pressure we were looking for, which was about 272. Yeah, it was about 272. So then, because we had the correct head pressure, we went ahead and checked our subcooling. Now our subcooling was really, really high. So we did a passive recovery to get some of that refrigerant out. Refrigerant out. So we had, we knew after that we had the correct charge after the subcooling was okay. And what was uh, our final subcooling temperature? Uh, I believe it was about fifteen. Fifteen. Yes. Now Which is right on the. Yeah, range. Uh, ideally you want about ten to fifteen. How did you Cool. Yeah, yeah I would usually just stick to the higher right. side of the 10 yeah. to the 15. All right. Uh, and how did what um, how, what made us decide to use the subcooling as opposed to the superheat? Right. Now, when you have a TXV valve, that fights to keep the superheat correct. So, because we had that TXV valve, we knew we couldn't check our refrigerant charge by using the superheat method. So we had to use the subcooling. Now, if you had a capillary tube. Or then if you go ahead and yeah, use the super yeah. heat. Yeah, that's when you super heat a little bit better, but yeah. for TXP, you have to do some cooling, right? Yep. That's yeah, all right. right. So I think uh, that about wraps that's up it. our discussion yeah. here about our charging procedure on this episode of Three Wise Guys, yep. HVAC Concepts. All right, see you later. Yep. Have a good one.